When we look at the Colorado River system, Lake Mead and Lake Powell are often discussed together, but their recent water level trends tell two very different stories. On the surface, it may seem confusing that Lake Mead is rising steadily while Lake Powell is clearly trending downward, even though Powell sits upstream and feeds Mead. However, this divergence is not accidental, nor is it random. It is the result of deliberate reservoir operations, controlled releases, and strategic balancing decisions designed to protect the entire system rather than any single lake. Lake Mead's recent increase is one of the most encouraging developments seen in years. The reservoir has climbed consistently, crossing key elevation milestones and moving further away from historically critical thresholds. This rise is not driven by sudden natural inflows alone, but by a carefully managed increase in releases from upstream reservoirs, particularly Glen Canyon Dam at Lake Powell. Water managers have prioritized stabilizing Lake Mead because it is the final major storage point before water is delivered to millions of people across Nevada, Arizona, California, and northern Mexico. A higher Lake Mead level directly improves water security, operational flexibility, and power generation reliability at Hoover Dam. In contrast, Lake Powell's declining trend is more concerning at first glance, but it must be understood in context. Powell has been deliberately drawn down to support downstream needs. Its role within the system is to function as a buffer reservoir, absorbing variability and redistributing water when required. During this period, Powell has been tasked with releasing more water than it receives, causing its level to fall steadily throughout much of the year. This does not mean Powell is failing, rather it is fulfilling its designed function within the broader system. One of the most important reasons Lake Mead is rising is the reduction in downstream outflows combined with sustained upstream releases. Hoover Dam releases have been carefully managed to allow Mead to store more water instead of passing it downstream too quickly. This controlled accumulation has allowed the lake to recover elevation even without exceptional inflow events. Each foot gained at Lake Mead represents a significant increase in stored volume, which strengthens long-term stability and reduces immediate risk. Lake Powell, on the other hand, has experienced a clear seasonal peak followed by a long decline. This pattern reflects a strategy where Powell absorbs inflow during peak runoff periods and then steadily releases water over the remainder of the year. The decline is exacerbated when inflows weaken while release obligations remain fixed. As a result, Powell can lose elevation rapidly even during periods when Mead is gaining. This asymmetry highlights how the system prioritizes downstream reliability over upstream storage. Another critical factor is power generation. Hoover Dam's efficiency improves as Lake Mead rises, providing more consistent hydroelectric output. This makes maintaining Mead's elevation a top operational priority. Glen Canyon Dam, while also important for power generation, has greater flexibility to operate at lower elevations due to its design and the structure of Lake Powell itself. This allows managers to draw Powell down further without immediately triggering critical consequences, though limits still exist. The contrasting trends also reveal how short-term gains can mask long-term vulnerabilities. Lake Mead's increase is undeniably positive and provides breathing room, but it does not eliminate systemic challenges. Meanwhile, Lake Powell's decline is a warning signal that upstream storage is under pressure. If Powell continues to drop without sufficient recovery periods, its ability to buffer future demands could be reduced. This makes the current situation a trade-off rather than a simple success or failure story. What makes Lake Mead's rise particularly notable is its consistency.
The lake has not merely bounced upward briefly, but has shown sustained gains over several weeks. This suggests that operational changes are working as intended, at least in the short term. Higher water levels reduce the risk of operational constraints at Hoover Dam and improve confidence in near-term water deliveries. From a management perspective, this is a significant achievement. In contrast, Lake Powell's decline has been steady and persistent with only minor interruptions. The lake peaked earlier in the year and then entered a prolonged drawdown phase. This reflects the reality that Powell is bearing the burden of system stabilization. While this strategy protects Meade, it leaves Powell more exposed. The concern is not the decline itself, but how long it lasts and how low it ultimately goes before recovery begins. It is also important to recognize that Lake Mead and Lake Powell respond differently to the same volume of water due to their shapes and storage characteristics. A given amount of water can raise mead more visibly than Powell, or vice versa, depending on elevation ranges. This means visual comparisons can sometimes exaggerate differences. Still, the overall trend remains clear. Mead is strengthening, while Powell is weakening. From a system-wide perspective, the current approach reflects a shift towards protecting the most critical node in the network. Lake Mead's position at the end of the delivery chain makes it the highest priority reservoir. Ensuring its stability helps prevent cascading failures downstream. Lake Powell, though vitally important, serves more as a regulator than a final destination. This explains why its decline is tolerated to a degree that would be unacceptable at Mead. However, this strategy is not without risk. If Powell continues to fall without adequate recovery, it could reach elevations that limit its operational flexibility. This would reduce the system's ability to respond to future variability. In that sense, Powell's decline should not be ignored simply because Mead is rising. The health of the Colorado River system depends on both reservoirs functioning effectively, not just one. The contrasting trends also challenge simplistic narratives about water recovery. Lake Mead's increase is real and meaningful, but it is partly built on the sacrifice of upstream storage. Powell's decline, while troubling, is not necessarily a sign of failure, but a reflection of deliberate management choices. Understanding this dynamic is essential for interpreting the data correctly and avoiding misleading conclusions. In the coming months, attention will increasingly turn to whether Powell can stabilize or recover. A balanced system requires Powell to regain some elevation to restore its buffering capacity. At the same time, maintaining Meade's gains will remain a priority. The challenge is finding equilibrium where neither reservoir is pushed too close to its operational limits. In conclusion, the current water level trends tell a complex but revealing story. Lake Mead's rise is a strong positive signal, demonstrating the effectiveness of targeted management and controlled releases. Lake Powell's decline, while concerning, reflects its role as the system's shock absorber. These opposing trends are two sides of the same strategy, highlighting both the strengths and vulnerabilities of the Colorado River system. The situation is neither purely good nor purely bad, but it underscores the delicate balance required to keep both reservoirs functioning in an increasingly constrained environment.